a bitter end. Godiva says it will shut down all 128 of its brick-and-mortar locations across North America as sales of famous Belgian chocolate brand fall due to the, you know. Turkish-owned maker of Belgian chocolate will shut North America locations. The closures will affect Godiva's cafes as well as its retail boutique stores. Godiva will offer its products for sale at food and drug stores as well as online. Okay, so it's not everything. You're still going to be all right. Maybe. We'll see what kind of offerings they have in the stores. I think they have good chocolate. I think their ice cream is pretty good as well. Not going to say I indulge in it too much, but when we go to Vegas, fashion show mall, been known to step into a Godiva store and grab a couple of uh, white chocolate bars myself. The company says the 19 pandemic has led to steep drop in overall sales. Godiva owns and operates 600 locations in US, Canada, Europe, and China. That is what, roughly a fifth, right around a fifth of their worldwide locations. So we'll see what happens with other countries. Europe, obviously they're going through it as well. So it'll be interesting to see, well, being from Europe, what kind of store closures they would see over there since they're going through a lot of the similar things we are. Would they riot in the streets of Europe if Godiva goes away? Eh, we'll see. The economic disaster brought on by the 19 pandemic has claimed another victim. Belgian chocolate maker Godiva, the Turkish-owned chocolatier, announced that it will shutter all 128 of its brick-and-mortar locations, which we learned about. It says here, two years ago, the company set out on an ambitious plan to open some 2,000 cafes worldwide by 2025, and perhaps if the pandemic didn't happen, maybe they would have been on the path to do that. But on Wednesday, it was announced that the company would seek to either sell its locations or simply close them down. In April 2019, Godiva opened its first cafe concept in New York City. In the 12 months that followed, the company opened dozens of other locations. Godiva cafes offer an assortment of baked goods, including Belgian liege waffles. I probably didn't pronounce that right, so if you're Belgian, it, apologies, apologies. I will eat one when I get to visit your country. And chocolate-inspired cookies. According to Food Business Network, there is such a thing as Food Business Network, apparently. The company said that the CV pandemic has kept people away from in-person shopping at its locations. This is the cafe here. I've never been in one, never seen one for myself. Our brick-and-mortar locations in North America have a clear purpose since we first opened our doors in this market. To provide an in-person experience for consumers to enjoy the world's most exquisite chocolates, said Godiva Chocolatier CEO Nurtak Afridi. We have always been focused on what our consumers need and how they want to experience our brand, which is why we have made this decision. Of course, this decision was difficult because of the care we have for our dedicated and hardworking chocolatiers who will be impacted. We are grateful for all they have done to make wonderful moments for our consumers and spread happiness through incredible customer service and living our values and behaviors. Uh, he really went deep with that one, didn't he? I'm like, homie, it's just, it's just chocolate, my man. It's just chocolate. As I said, it's pretty good chocolate. And something I'm thinking about is if they're keeping, obviously, internet sales and if they're still going to make the chocolates available at food and drug stores, like they indicated above in the headline, are they... You know, I get it. I get it. The pandemic, these states that have done what they've done to crush business without care, to kill industry and to kill jobs. That's another conversation for another day. I've ranted on that. I feel how I feel about it in terms of opening up and managing risk and balancing that with the economic needs, people to have jobs, people to get back to work, people to be productive and to be able to go outside. But let's not get into that too much. But I'm thinking... Are they trying to still keep that footprint with hopes that when things turn around, you know, before they hit us with the next pandemic and the next one and the next one with all those closures that are sure to happen because you know it's going to keep happening the next time something comes around like this flu. But are they trying to keep a footprint to where the hope is that if they turn things around, they can expand again quickly? You don't want to totally vanish from the consciousness of individuals. 
is what I'm getting at. So it makes sense from that perspective that they would try to cut costs in terms of physical locations. And you would think a lot more businesses would try to do something like this because it looks like even with the vaccine that there may be no end in sight. They always tell me every day about this new variation, this new strain, oh, how it's so much more dangerous, this and that. If businesses are able to kind of look at the long run or even short run, kind of consolidating, closing some shops, scaling back, but keeping the footprint, as I said, to where they're still in people's minds, to where things turn around, hopefully that they can look at their more productive locations in terms of sales and start all over again. While Godiva is closing its stores, it will still maintain a presence in North America. Afridi, what's up Z, said that the company will offer its products for sale through food, drug, and mass retail outlets, as well as online shops. We are making it even easier for our consumers to enjoy Godiva, whether that's by treating themselves or gifting, so that they can have access to our premium chocolate, Afridi said, so you don't have to walk out to get any now and burn a couple calories. You can just have those yummy chocolates delivered to your doorstep and you just lounge on your couch and and make sure to put your mask on in between bites though. Godiva is already available in many retailers in North America and we will continue to increase our presence there while always upholding the premium quality, taste, and innovation that we have been renowned for since we were founded in Brussels in 1926. Mmm, damn, that looks good. I want to give me some of that. Godiva owns and operates more than 600 shops in the U.S., Canada, Europe, and Asia, as we learned about earlier. The company plans to maintain its locations outside of North America. Okay, so that answers what I was talking about earlier. Last week, the government said Americans cut back on spending in December for the third straight month as the surge in virus cases kept people away from stores during the critical holiday shopping season. So that was probably the death blow or that in combination with upcoming Valentine's Day where people are still going to be terrified and locked down and things are going to be closed for the most part. So they really would to have seen likely no improvement in those important months, right? The Commerce Department, oh, don't forget about Easter. The Commerce Department said last Friday that retail sales fell a seasonally adjusted 0.7% in December from the month before. A decline Wall Street analysts weren't expecting. Sales also fell in October and November, even as retailers tried to get people shopping for Christmas gifts early by offering deals before Halloween. Friday's report covers only about a third of overall consumer spending. Services such as haircuts and hotel stays, which have been badly hurt, by the pandemic are not included. It's going to be a bloodbath as well, I would expect. The unexpected decline underscores the economy's troubles as the pandemic has worsened this winter. Employers shed jobs last month for the first time since April. And layoffs appear to be continuing as the number of people seeking jobless benefits jumped last week to the highest level since August. Not good at all. Hopefully all of you are doing well. Hopefully you saved. Hopefully you're able to work still or have your online businesses going. Hopefully uh, this does not look good. Ah, that's left many Americans with less to spend. But the recent $600 stimulus checks sent to most Americans is expected to boost the economy in the coming months. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, hold up. Let me make sure I read that right. Is expected to... So they're telling us the $600 check is going to boost the economy. Going to need that additional $1,400 from good old Joe. Or another fresh 2K coming my way for everyone in order for the economy to be boosted. And as vaccines are more widely distributed, economists expect the economy to rebound at a healthy pace in the second half of this year. We'll see about that. So far, retailers have reported mixed results for the holiday season. Big box retailer Target, which sells groceries, fashions, and cleaning supplies. Under one roof, said sales rose during the holidays as virus-weary people seek one-stop shopping. In other words, the government, as we know with them in Walmart, Amazon, etc., government closed everything, so they're funneling people into one-stop shops. So big business doing great, small business... Not that Godiva small, but small business not doing so well. Meanwhile, chains typically found at malls such as Nordstrom, Victoria's Secret, and Urban Outfitters reported a sales drop. The Commerce Department said sales even fell online, down nearly 6% after rising 19% for the year. So maybe people are 
getting it and pinching pennies when they can. And well, I guess if you don't have any money, what choice do you have? You can't spend any, right? You can't spend what you don't have. Regardless, for those people that do have it, hopefully, and it's what I talked about many months ago, is hopefully you're able to cut back. If you have some excess to you, hopefully you see that you need to cut back here because it's nothing on you. It's just who knows when they're going to let us out of this. That may be due to Amazon, which held its annual Prime Day sales event in October this year for the first time, which likely pushed people to shop earlier in the season and spend less in December, analysts at Wells Fargo Security said. Walmart, Target, and Best Buy followed Amazon's lead, offering competing discounts to coincide with Prime Day. At restaurants and bars, sales fell 4.5% in December, as states restricted in-person dining, ending the year down 21%, Another industry hit hard, as they mentioned there. It's unfortunate. So many jobs lost. Let's get on to some comments. You know somebody's going to have something to say. Overpriced and overhyped. Yeah, sure. They may be overpriced, but I don't know about overhyped. Overrated candy. Mm-hmm. Only socialist-approved businesses will exist under China Joe. The last time I had visited Godiva, it tastes like poop. And somebody said, how would you know? Tasted some before? Exaggerations. Come on, man. Come on, man. R.I.P. Lady Godiva. They should partner with locally owned coffee shops in the cities they had stores in after the lockdown. It would help to bring support and exposure for local small businesses while keeping them in brick and mortar. And that's what they talked about here. Food, drug stores, things like that. Maybe there is something in the works where they're doing that, but if not, that's a great idea. Almost a hundred years old company destroyed by Socialist Joe's America in four days. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> it's only been four days and you can't put that on him because this has been something that's been in progress for a while and blame would be more on governors, local municipalities. You, <laughs> you gotta be a troll when you're saying stuff like that. You can't really be serious. Haha, <laughs> between the 19 and Joe as president, America will be going out of business too. You can't really hit him for this kind of stuff, but Things going forward, sure, if they go forward with any of those lockdowns that they talked about, even temporarily, you would hope not now with the vaccine here, but even if they went ahead with four weeks, six week lockdowns, something that would just obliterate business. It would crush the economy and I think you would see another steep drop in the stock market. Just one segment of it, like we saw when was it March, April, that was drastic. We don't want that to happen again. So hopefully we don't see that. I know people on one side maybe cheering for that just to say they were right, but just like the morons on the left were cheering at Trump's failures that hurt the country on the right, I would say don't be those morons. Don't cheer on failure. It looks like signs may be pointing to something recession-wise and they'll find a way to blame Trump, of course. Don't be those people that root for things that are bad because it doesn't hurt the elites. It doesn't hurt the politicians. It doesn't, it's not going to hurt the people you think it's going to hurt. It's not going to hurt China Joe. It's not going to hurt Nancy or Chuck. It's not going to hurt Mitch. It's not going to hurt any of those people. It's going to hurt you and me. So I would say don't root for that. All right, everybody. I'll still try to find my truffles somewhere. And again, white chocolate bars. Got to have one every now and then. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Be well.